Right. Hello everyone, welcome to the Rugby League Lunch Hour here on loverugbyleague.com with me, James Gordon. I'm joined by Drew Derbyshire. I've been told actually to give a shout out to your legs, Drew. To my legs? Who's yeah, who's one, of, one of your fans. They, they've got to remain nameless if she's watching. She <laughs> watch um, I think I know who she is. We're in partnership with Betfred and Heaven and Health. <laughs> Thanks as always to them for their support. Don't forget to check out Heaven and Health. Um, and check out Drew's feature, the Rugby League Diet, where we ask um, your favourite Super League players what they eat day to day. Um, if you want to get them bodies. Yeah, you know, good Temple, timing for Temple New Year New, Year, New Year diet. We're doing our, you know, we're not just about rugby league news. We're doing our bit for the uh, the rugby league community and improving health and all that. Um, we'll talk about all the random stuff that we normally talk about. If you want us to chat about anything or you want to give any of your thoughts, please do leave them in the comments. Um, we'll start with with Great Britain then. So um, afternoon, Louis Banks. Um, Great Britain, another test match defeat, uh, lost to New Zealand last week, um, and then yet again, uh, it, it almost like Wayne Bennett's almost turned into a parody of a of a coach. He's now um, named the team for this week. It's pretty much the same team as last week. So even though Ash Handley was flown out there, he's not going to play. Blake Austin's still going to be on the wing, and then the likes of George Williams and Jake Truman, who've not featured on the tour at all. Apparently, they're not going to be included either. Um, Bennett's just made a right pig's ear of the whole tour, hasn't he? Well, I, can't, I just can't believe Ash Hanley's not going to be playing against PNG because I, I'm sure, I, I think he was in, in Paris and he, and he got told to come home. So I think it, I think he'd, he'd been on holiday in Paris or something like that. He got told to, to come home well, early wasn't, or rush go... home or something like that. And then to, uh, he's flown out to... To PNG, what is it? What, how many miles is it to PNG? Oh, I don't know. It's it's at least well, you must have to fly to Australia well. first. Yeah. Then. But but wasn't he in Australia for the England Nines? Yeah. So he was, he was doing the the World Cup with the England Nines, and then he's obviously come back. I think he he went to where his partner to France, <laughs> and then. Uh, I won't mind his air miles. Oh well, yeah, yeah, no, no. He's, he's, but, he's certainly enjoyed the off season, but I I, I think he'd be pretty he'd be pretty miff, wouldn't he? Uh, not. To, to go all that way and then not play, uh, not, play not not feature at all. I mean, all, I, all I, he's, effectively, all he's, he's done is had a couple of gym sessions with the, the Lions squad because they wouldn't have done much ball. Like a, I, I, the, I said this last week. Ball. I said this last week. If you were going to bring him over, they should have done it in time for him to play against New Zealand last week. They should have flown him over when Gildart got injured. Yeah. Um, and then, you know... Whatever. But what I mean, has Bennett Bennett but, made his position sort of untenable now? I don't. I, think, I can't imagine there's many. Fans, I can't imagine I think, there's many fans who want Bennett to stay. I think that there's always been doubts over Wayne Bennett's knowledge of the Super League, and I and I genuinely genuinely believe that Wayne Bennett doesn't know much about Ash Hamley. Uh, I think he's he's been kind of earmarked by Kevin Sinfield or Jamie Peacock. Uh, saying that there's there's a winger in Super League who's, who's done pretty all right and, and that's why they flew him over. I don't think Wayne Bennett's asked for him to be flown over, uh, if I'm honest, because well he's, he's not he's not playing him. He's playing an half back who's probably fifteen kilos lighter as well than the Nash Hamley to, to play against a, a physical Papua New Guinea. To be fair to Austin, he did all right last week. No, he did he did, he did he did all right, but when you've got a wing, it's an international squad, and so when you've got a winger. Who's flown over there, especially just for one game because he, could, he couldn't play last week against the Kiwis, Ash Hanley. The only game he could play was this Papua New Guinea game. Uh, so he's flown over effectively just for one game uh, and he's not been picked. Uh, and that's not a dig at Austin whatsoever. Uh, obviously, he dropped a couple of eyeballs last week, but that's that's kind of to be expected because he's not a winger. I felt, yeah, I felt I think... sorry for him last week because he was getting a lot of stick from, from um, supporters and fans on social media, but he. You can't really expect him to to act like a winger when he's he's, he's not never played there professionally. There, there was um there was like a chance near the end, wasn't there, where Hastings had got him behind and kicked to the corner, yeah. and you feel like a winger, you know, a a, a, a recognised winger probably would have finished that. I, I tweeted you. It's hard not to feel sorry for Blake Austin because he's sort of been parachuting into this Great Britain team on the wing. He's getting enough grief as it is because he's Australian. Um, let's just. Like the thing is though now is the amount of things that Wayne Bennett is getting wrong on this tour. So you know, and this is before we even get to the fact that they've been rubbish. They, they've not and been they, playing. And what's even what's even more annoying as well? We, we've only been speaking about the the winger situation, but 
what's even more frustrating is that we could have. There's a, a, a well, it's highly likely that George Williams and Jake Truman would have gone on the Great Britain Lions tour and not played a game. Mm. I mean, so there's a good chance suppose... that they, they, they've been out there all this time. Well, obviously, George. Mm. Well, I think he'll, he'll be coming back and spending Christmas with his family. But there's a good chance George Williams has gone all the way out there. Just play for England in the the World Cup nines and not have a sniff. Well, I mean, you, you could make the argument that Wayne Bennett's trying to weaken Canberra by taking him out there because it gives him less preparation time for the NRL. <laughs> of course, Wayne Bennett has a conflict of interest because he's the. What about his quotes as well? Uh, Bennett's quotes about the. Well, this is what I mean. Let, let's, let's, the World Cup. So let's let's um, let's run through the things that he's got wrong. The squad selection in the first place: six halfbacks, you know, two mm. wingers, one pretty much one centre, obviously. All went belly up because a winger and a centre both got injured. That's the first faux par, if you like. The England World Cup nines was a bit of a joke. I mean, he had four props on the field at one point. Picking Ryan Hall, you'd say, maybe he only played five, six games. Picking Chris Hill, maybe, you know, ahead of Liam Watts. Not picking Regan Grace. I mean, with with all due respect, I, I, I'm, on the, I'm, on the, I'm on the fence with Regan Grace because I wouldn't have him, if I was picking the best... British players. I don't think Regan Grace would make my team, but then at the same time, he was almost pivotal to making it feel like a Great Britain team because obviously he's a. And then to not only not only not pick him in the first place, but then to come out and say we've not called him up because he's Welsh is just out of order. To to basically diminish the whole tour by saying it's just preparation for the England World Cup. That's another thing. He's he's trying it out with the halfbacks. He's got Widdop and Hastings. He's saying he's he's named so many halfbacks to try combinations, and he's played the same two halfbacks each time. He's and they've lost every time. So, yeah. So you can kind of understand if he hadn't changed it, but they've won three eighty three. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You, you don't understand and that. But the other one they've, for me, they've not, they've not won a game, and the the second test against the Kiwis last weekend was abysmal. That that was by far the worst uh, performance of the tour. Uh, I don't. I don't think they played too bad against Tonga, and obviously Tonga went on the following week to to beat uh, oh, yeah. Australia. But the the two matches in particular against the Kiwis uh, have been abysmal, and I think the halfbacks' performances have been uh, below par, far below. Uh, I think I've been disappointed with Gareth Widder uh, on this. Well, tour. I mean, I, I mean, uh, I'm very much. I think the, outside, the outside backs. We've mentioned it every single week. The, the outside backs simply haven't been good enough. I think the only player who can pretty much be proud of himself, he's Zach Hardacre and even he's kind of playing out of position in the centres. The um, the thing with, obviously with the halfback situation is, and I read a, I think Nigel Whisker wrote a good blog, in a good article in the Mirror today, um, how Josh Hodgson's style at hooker isn't great for involving the two halfbacks. And it has been noticeable that when Daryl Clark's come on, that Great Britain have been a lot better. But for whatever reason, even though everyone's seen it in each of the tests, Clark's not being given a start. And again, that points towards Bennett's ignorance towards Super League. He's picking Hodgson because he plays in the NRL. Um, obviously, there's a bit of debate because the thing is, is it's almost Great Britain and England have almost amalgamated into one, which has caused a disaster on multiple angles because one, it's completely ruined the return of Great Britain. Two, it's completely ruined, really, Wayne Bennett's stature as England coach. Because if he'd have been able to separate the two and Great Britain had been naff, Wayne Bennett could have maybe stepped away and said, all right, it was a bad decision for me to be Great Britain coach, but I could remain as England coach. But he's got himself into that much of a hole now that I just don't see how they can, especially with it being over here as well in England, where they need to sell tickets. I think if they keep Wayne Bennett as coach, that will affect ticket sales. Because I think people are that miffed. Imagine if, you know, we were looking at going at one point, and there's plenty of fans who have gone. Imagine if you paid four, four or five grand to go over to, to watch this tour. Yeah. It's been an absolute shambles. No, it has. Um, um, and then the, the other, uh, another point is, should there have been tour matches other than the four test matches? Because you, you mentioned about Williams and Truman. You know, why, yeah. why haven't we played like a Prime Minister's 13 or, you know, something like that where... Truman Williams, even though they weren't going to get a run out in the main test, could have at least had a run around and you know made the trip worthwhile. And, and even the, the Prime Minister's 13 is still a very strong squad. I think obviously David, I think David Fafita played in it this year, um, and the likes of um, the Coots played Murray. in it once before, actually. 
Did okay. he? Yeah. Oh, he did, he did, yeah. He did a, a, an interview with him a couple of weeks ago. And it, it, so it's a pretty strong team. Or even just playing the junior kangaroos, because the junior kangaroos would be a, well, a I mean, strong France, test. France, France are over there. Yeah, France, you know. France are over there. And you could, you could have made it into a proper tour, like the kangaroos are looking at doing in 2020 over here. They, they want to play a they, proper they, tour, play clubs. They should have played They should have played Australia instead of New Zealand last week, so you'd have played test matches yeah. against Australia, New Zealand, Tonga, Papua New Guinea. You could have, France are over there, you could have played France, you could have played the junior kangaroos, you could have played the Prime Minister's 30. What, 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 what's striking uh, at the minute is, is it seems that Great Britain and GB, um, the GB and uh, England, sorry, uh, are slightly ignorant towards the home nations and the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, that's what it seems like f- for me. It seems like you mean because to, of Bennett, you mean? Yeah, it seems like they don't want to put play France, even if it's just in a mid-season test, uh, and play, playing against the likes of Wales, Ireland, and Scotland just on and off, isn't it? it yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's pretty, it's, there's obviously it this, there's strange. obviously this concern that you know, obviously we we were we did play you, a few mid-season against France, and obviously they were turning into blasts, but you've got to play them, haven't yeah, you? you, you You'd rather play France in a mid-season test and just not have one at all because a couple of weeks ago we're, there, were, there was an interview out with uh, Tom Burgess saying that after yeah, the after the Tonga defeat that it was a massive disadvantage. Could, it, could you not just have? Because, could they not just yeah, play the England play. Knights? Do you, you know what I mean? Could, I mean, I suppose. I mean, my thinking of it is, I suppose it's difficult with the NRL players, isn't it? But ultimately, regardless of whether you use NRL players or not, even if you had an England team without the NRL players, I, I mean, it's it's hard, isn't it? Because obviously. Is it really worthwhile having a mid-season test with our half team? Yeah. I suppose that's the hardest part, but we've just got to get over that somehow. Could, well, <laughs> what's stopping the NRL play, best players from coming over? Because we, we, we well, uh, yeah. went over... I mean, we tried a few things. We tried France, we tried Wales, we tried the Exiles, and it's like we almost give it a run for a couple of... Well, D- David Fafita keeps uh, keeps tweeting us, doesn't he? The Wakefield David Fafita, he, he's determined to, to bring well, I mean, back the thing, with, the thing with Super League now is Super League, we're all about these big events and, you know, creating brands. Super League could really adopt the Exiles yeah. brand, maybe call it something different. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a massive fan of the Exiles name. I just don't, I'm not sure what it means or whatever. Well, obviously, I know what it means, but you know what I mean? It, I think you could create that almost like the Barbarians in Rugby Union. It'd be Super League all Because they, could, cause they could play, Exiles could play, they could play England, they could play Wales, they could play France. Cut the loot fixtures out of Super League, but then make the Exiles a Super League commodity that you sell tickets for, that maybe then, you know, clubs get a kickback. You could, and you could, have, a, you could have a two-week international window in the middle of the season mm. where, you know, England play a few games, Exiles play a few games, Wales play a few games, and then all of a sudden... Instead of having to cram all the International Rugby League at the end of the year, you're getting some sort of value in the mid-season test. Because, you know, like we said before, 2019, there's been no England internationals. England has played Jamaica, yeah, but there's been no test matches in England, you know, involving England. I know we had Greece and Scotland and whoever else that they played, but there's not been anything there. And I just think if you, if you, created, if you created Exiles as a Super League commodity, that... That it then makes sense for Super League to because at the moment the Super League were a bit dictated to by the RFL, aren't they? Because the RFL will say to Super League, we want England to play in this day, and then it's like Super League will say, well, we're not going to release our players. I don't think that's happened. I think the Super League absolutely will. But there's a lot more if Super League can own the Exiles concept and then use that as a way of commercialising. Yeah, you could have Sonny Bill playing for the Exiles. And James Malone. Do you know what I mean? You, you could have a a real good team. To be fair, the ex- I mean the Exiles generally did beat England anyway. Didn't yeah, they they did. Did. Um, <laughs> and that was before you had like you know Dan, Dan, Dan at one point. You know, you know, I think you could have you could have Merrid, you've got Reese Martin, you've got Williams, cool. let's, you've let's got Nai Karma, let's do a quick thirty coup. Full back or oh, would you would you have? Oh, well, well, I mean if it's gonna be England, not G B. Is it not gonna be playing for school? Oh, I suppose if you're gonna put that. Um full I don't know, full I mean full back, full back, full back, full back. Exiles full back. In Super League. Mead. Oh, Mead. Can't line up full yeah. maybe. Yeah. Reese Martin at 13. PNG. I can't think of any yeah. fullbacks. I don't know. Might have, might have. Not, 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 honestly, not, not, not watched the game for that long. We've completely forgot who fullbacks are in the league. There isn't that thing, because if you think you've got Ratchford's at Warrington, Ardacres at Wigan, Coots at Saints, Walker at Leeds, Shaw at Hull. Okay, yeah. you've, got, you've got old Brian at Toronto. Quinlan? Sure, yeah. I mean, Quinlan's probably, you, you go Quinlan's for Mead, probably the only option, yeah. Um, go, for, go for Mead. Wingers? I, I, my brain's gone. F- Mine has. 
Mine's the centres are going to be Nike, Armour and Hurl. There you send us. Well, then, another issue you've got with Exiles, if we're having a two-week international window over here, does that mean the NRL are going to have a two-week international window? Which then means that the likes of Oral and Moller here and, and all them are going to go over there. So that's part of the issue you've got, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Unless you just do it separate, because then it'd work, wouldn't it? If you if, if they were able to play in the games over here... Um, but we'll need here in the halves. We'll here. I can't think of any wingers. Okay. Maybe your wingers, let's do wingers first. I'm trying, to, I'm trying I'm trying to Bevan French. Bevan French. Play on wing. Um Bevan French, I got I'm a hurl. We're struggling, aren't we? I don't know. Well obviously there's not that many Australian wingers kicking around. Mm. I'm trying to think, Cass, Catalan, Leeds. Well, you, you could have one you could have Fanua, maybe at all. Fanua, yeah. <laughs> you could have two of Avi. In the centres, maybe. Um, hooker then. Lower here in Maloney in the house. Who's your hooker? Um, Tommy Lulewine. There's not many hookers um, are there. Well, obviously, his hookers are there. Who've Catalan got? Oh, they've got McAloran. Parcel. Yeah, there's not, there's not many because obviously there's a lot of good English hookers, aren't there? Because, yeah. um, you know, even, even Toronto have got hackers. Yeah. Um, you probably have to go with Lussick. Oh yeah, Lussick. So you could have Lussick at Salford. He qualified for England as well. Does he? Yeah. Oh jeez. Um, Lussick could be a hooker. Who's your props then? For Millin feet, Millington. For Millington. Sam Moore. Sam Cassiano. There's some big boppers. Kenny Edwards. <laughs> There's some big boys. Ike, 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 Ike. Yeah. Yeah, you won't yeah, struggle yeah. for front rowers. And then it's Sonny Bill and oh. Merrin and Reese Martin in your back row. Wow, that's a good team, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> we're going to put this that's, forward. That's a, that's we're a gonna big team. We're going to have to team. put this forward. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we've got, we got a couple of comments on, on the GB thing. Uh, Louis Banks says, I like Bennett, but he's uh, too stuck in his ways. Against PNG was a chance to shake things up and try new combinations. Uh, I think he's hinting at uh, Williams and maybe Truman and obviously Hanley as well. Uh, I, I, as well, if, if I was Lachlan Coote, I'd be, I'd be pretty frustrated to be fair. He, only, he played one test and then was dropped. and mm. I, th I think he should be given more of a chance. Uh, he, let me also say... But again, that's to do with the whole England thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it is. Uh, Great Britain has failed as a brand as the other nations are not represented and there isn't anyone who really could have slipped into the squad anyway. This shows we need to go away and seriously look at getting rugby back on the map in Wales, Scotland and Ireland. A team, well, in, a team in Glasgow in Super League will be a good stepping stone. Toby Jones says, I think the tour matches uh, should be against the likes of Fiji, PNG and Samoa, etc. As well as who we've already well, I mean, played. I mean, we're going to play Tonga and PNG and then it should have been Australia instead of New Zealand. But it's, it's, it was obviously... <sighs> With regards to, to the organisers at the International Rugby League as well, we kind of got to be, be fair to them because obviously the likes of Fiji, uh, Papua New Guinea, Samoa, Cook Islands, they've all been playing in the Oceania Cup as yeah, well, yeah, uh, yeah. which the Australian uh, side have been competing in as well. Let's run through some bits of news. LoveRugbyLeague.com for all the latest. Three players have left Batley, Jack Downs, Reese Dean and Danny Bravo, Johnny's brother that. Um, really? Sonny Bill Williams is outside. Is an outsider for the 2020 Man of Steel. Uh, I, I thought, 16 to 1 if you fancy a flutter with Betfred. I'm, I'm, I thought he, he would have been number 1 just because of his name. Blake Austin's done well to be favourite. I know, I know. 12 I know. to 1. Uh, Jackson Hastings joint favourite 12 to 1. Uh, James Maloney is then 14. Sonny Bill is 16 with Lachlan Coote and Widdup. Hardacre and Luke Gale are 20 to 1. Have they basically just pulled out anyone who's won the Man of Steel before and just given good odds? Jake Truman's 25 to 1, as is Jake Connor, Albert Kelly, Johnny Lomax, and Daryl Clark. Do you know what? Thir well, 33 to 1 is Bevan French. <laughs> the thing with the Man of Steel voting is, the thing with the Man of Steel voting is, because of the way it's done, you if you're the second best player week in, week out at your club, you're not necessarily gonna win. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So um, we'll see how that goes. I don't think Widdup at Widdup for 16 to 1. I've not seen anything in Widdup that makes me think he'll be anywhere near. The Betford have basically got Warrington's two halfbacks in the top top four for Man of Steel. Well, they've just picked out probably the top 10 earners in Super League next season. Um, so but, what, but I think, I think well, Be Be Bevan French at 33 to 1 is a nice But where is he going to play Bevan French? Well, that, that's, that's where it is. Because he's not going to play fullback. I don't care what you say, 
Our day could be the fullback. <laughs> but if he starts the season at fullback, that then Mods won't stay thirty three to one. Is he, he going to play standoff with with nah, these teams? Surely not. He can't be. I don't think he's an halfback. He's definitely a winger or fullback. So back. they're going to play it well. They've got Burgess. Well, obviously Freddy. Tom, Tom Davis is John Cathalon, so would Ardick play centre? Oh, as Bevan French. But then I just, I just think you lose. But, but Bevan think... French doesn't want to be a winger either. This well, is it's what, tough. This is... He's getting paid to be a rugby player. If the coach of the rugby team wants him to play on the wing, you got to play on the wing. You know what I mean? Um, league, knows? league one news: Stephen Roper has signed a new deal at North Wales. Um, Kieran Cross, Brandon Wilkinson and Ryan Dixon have signed new deals at Doncaster. Now, 2019 Golden Boot shortlist. I've seen the Aussie press have been up in arms because James Tedesco isn't on it because they completely don't understand what the award is. It's the best international player. Um, you'll have to help me with this. Tonga front rower. See you, see you at Tekiaho. Yeah, him. And then um, <laughs> two of our Sushek and uh, Jared Warrior Harries. We need, we need Robbie Paul for these. Polynesian yeah. pronunciations, yeah, yeah. don't we? Yeah. He's great. I'll give him a bell later on. Um, they're the three candidates for the 2019 I'm, I'm, Golden I want Teki Aho to win it because he'll be the first player outside of uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, and GB. Oh, slash that'd be England nice. to have uh, won the Golden Boots Award. And he's a goal kicking prop forward. Well, um, here's a Christmas themed story. Uh, uh, NRL forward Slade Griffin has had to retire due to knee injuries. Um, I've got what else has happened? England. I can feel my, I can feel my voice. Well, breaking. have a drink, lad. Have a drink. I've no, got a drink in here. Um, England women's second test will be shown live by the BBC on Saturday morning. Is that red button? It is red button, and it's also being streamed through the Our channel, yeah, and yeah, um, yeah. it'll be on the iPlayer as well, and um, on demand, and all. Oh, uh, George Burgess says he's aiming for the best career, best season of his career at Wigan. I'm surprised at that. I'm surprised he's not aiming for the second best season. <laughs> um, Kit, West Wales are looking for a new coach because Kim Williams has gone to Huddersfield as academy coach. Um, so that that, that, that one win at West Wales must have done him some good. Must have, <laughs> yeah. have basically seen him I mean, that season. I've seen a few comments because obviously Williams was brought in by West Wales on a three-year deal. Um, three year plan and he's gone after one year so they're in a bit of a hole down well, there he's pretty he's pretty highly, highly, uh, highly regarded isn't he well <laughs> I mean it's because of his accent isn't it anyone with an Australian yeah. accent gets a little bit of, bit of, bit of extra yeah, he has Welsh, Welsh heritage as well well with a name like Kim Williams I'm not surprised um, <laughs> French Magic Weekend this week it's finally here we're flying to Carcassonne tomorrow morning we're at Carcassonne's team uh, captain's run tomorrow night, and then Saturday and Sunday, it's the Elite One Championship. We're going to be covering it live on Twitter. We'll do some Facebook stuff as well. We'll have match reports on every game. We're hunting for English speakers in France as well to do some interviews after. We've already lined up Jake Emmett. We know he can speak English. We've got a few other lads. Maxime Garcia, um, a he's, former Sheffield yeah. player, he's, he's uh, going to speak to us as well. Levin Zongu. Levin Zongu, he, he yeah. Plays at, um, where does he play? He Albi. plays at Albi, yeah. So, um, so basically, French Magic Weekend, Saturday and Sunday. You can watch it online. We'll put the link up somewhere at some point. The fixtures are Saturday's Palau against Avignon, um, Lesignon and Lemu, that's Saturday. And then Sunday is St. Gordon's against Toulouse, Albi against Villeneuve, and St. Steve, which is Catalan's reserve team, against Carcassonne. It's at Carcassonne's ground, the Stad Albert Domek. We're staying up the road from there, so we're going to have a lovely time. England played France a couple of years ago at that ground, didn't Yeah, it? it's a nice ground, but it's got an athletics track, I think. Oh, I think far it's got away. an athletics track. I think it has. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure it has. Now, interesting twist to this French Magic Weekend. So in the French Elite One Championship, they get three points for a win. But in Magic Weekend, they get four points for a win. Are you trying to start something there, Jim? I'm not trying to start are, are anything. You, are you, are you what I want to know is how did he how did he do it in the league table? Because you know, like you know, like when you know, like when you look at a team and they've won ten games and they've got twenty points. Well, a team that could have won ten games will have thirty points, but then a team that's won ten games might have thirty-one points because of this. So did he show it yeah. as a bonus point column in the table or what? That's what I need to I need to speak to my mate in France and figure out what. Can you doing. imagine if that happened in this country? Uh, with the Super League Magic Weekend, and, and one one team won won the league leader shield by yeah, a point, yeah. or got into the top five by uh, a point. Anyway, in the Elite Two Championship, which we've been covering the last well since it started last month, um, Carpentras, Eel, Villefranche, and Villehenk 
I think that's the right pronunciation. They all won. That was four home wins at the weekend. Lescure played Pier on Sunday. Um, what else has been happening, Drew? Pier is a team that uh, Liam Mossop made his Wigan debut against. Fun fact. Good knowledge, good knowledge. Well, it was your first game that I read it on, James. Was it really? Yeah. Well. Oh, well, that does ring a bell. Hull have si uh, sorry, York have signed Hulk R winger Elliot Wallace on a season-long loan. Recently called up to the Nigerian national team. Sheffield, new kit, new crest. We like this. Thumbs up from me, definitely, for the new Sheffield Eagles logo and also to their new kits, which are being revealed just before we came online. The home kit is nice. The away kit, we're not too sure about, but we'll just brush that aside. The, the home kit's a bit like, it's a red V, but with the yellow trim. I think it could do a little bit of work. I think maybe put the yellow, make it a red and yellow V rather than it just looking like a Saints kit, but it looks nice. The um, flying high at the minute of the Eagles. Yeah, obviously got to Wembley last year. World Cup Challenge, we've not talked about. Oh. St. Helens against Sydney Roosters. Um, that's now being confirmed um, at the Totally Wicked Stadium on Saturday, February 22nd, 7.45pm kickoff. Interesting time, good for me because it can get to fo from football to thereafter. Um, interesting, it is an interesting time because I, I wonder how much Sky have been involved in that. And like, you know, have, have they basically, Super League said, we want a, you know, a big time. Because there's not really much to clash with on a Saturday night, is there, on, in no, terms no, of live there's not. Uh, it's, I think it's a, a very good time. Uh, I'm I'm happy that it's it's actually going ahead because but it's only this time of year, isn't it, that we actually find out if the the World Cup challenge for the following season uh, is actually going ahead or not. Mm. It, 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 I think it depends which uh, Australian team wins the NRL. Doesn't well, it? it always uh, goes ahead, doesn't it? But S Sydney Roosters and, and the coach, the Trent Robinson, is very passionate about the the World Cup challenge and he's been very very uh, vocal about it uh, in the past. He wants it to stay. He wants it to be an important. Um, Matt, uh, well, he, he wants it to be a permanent fixture uh, in the rugby league calendar, uh, and I think it should be. I, I've always enjoyed watching World Club Challenge games. Um, no matter what team it is, they always want the the Super League side to win. Um, it, no, 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 it doesn't all, uh, happen that often, but um, I hope Saints can, can get one over the Roosters, but it will be of course, very, very difficult. Sydney Roosters won it last year. So they'll be looking for back to back wins. Now I'm just double checking, has anyone back to back won it before? I've got the Storm not done it. No, I don't think they have. No, so no one's won it back to back before. So um So that obviously they did that with the NRL, didn't they? Uh, uh, how many games into the, the season will it be for Christian Wolf and his new season? No, they'd that'd be what, the third week? Uh, they'll have played 31st, 7th, no that'll be the 4th, they'll have played 3 games before that. So it'll still be pretty, um, pretty fresh. But it'll give him a nice little lead time into it. Um, uh, obviously Wigan won, Wigan beat Cronulla in 2017. That is the only time an English side has won it since 2012 when Leeds beat Manly. Um, it would be Sydney Roosters' 5th um, triumph, which would be... Uh, have they got the most? Anyone knows won 4, have they, apart from them? Um, oh, we're going to have won four, of course. Um, so, Sydney Roosters will be top of the top dogs, if you like, with five, um, if they if they win that one. So, you'll have a few um, Wigan fans actually sporting Saints. Like well, that. maybe, maybe. I, I, wouldn't hold, I wouldn't hold your breath, though. Um, let's just have a look at Saints' fixtures, actually, now you mention, now you come to mention it. Um, who are they playing before? They start they get the season off against Salford, don't they? fixtures like. page on the St. Helens website, I can tell you that for free. Um, they start play against who? Salford. Oh well, the fixtures are on the St. Helens website, so that's a, that's no use. Let's go on Super League website then. Um, blimey. St. Helens Salford first game at home. It's on Sky, isn't it? Um, Friday? Yeah, on Sky on the Friday. Then the following week they're at Warrington away on the Thursday. And then the week after that, they are at Hull on the Sunday. Which isn't uh, which isn't very good planning, is it really? Because they played Hull on the Sunday before they played Sydney on the Saturday. And, and they're meant to be. I don't know why Hull are playing on the. Is the, that is there maybe football or something on there? Maybe uh, they they're meant to be playing Castellans out at the weekend of the World Cup Challenge. Who's that? St. Helens. Yeah. Oh, and that's being rearranged. And I think, for I think the time. that's meant to be at the Total Wicked Stadium as well. So obviously <laughs> Castellans might have to 
to uh, travel over to say it's in, in midweek, which I, I doubt they'll be happy about. But if they, if they can get it on a week where they're already playing away, uh, it shouldn't be too bad for them, should it? Well, unless they wait for one of the cup, maybe squeeze it in the cup week if if one of them get knocked out of the cup early. Um, I can't see that happening. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe we'll see. Um, what was I going to say here? I have another thing up here. That oh, mailbox. Love a good mailbox. And because we're struggling, we've pad these out. So mailbox, you can write into me every week, james at lovablebelieve.com. I'll publish almost like a letters page, if you like. Um, we do publish one of these every week on a Tuesday morning. Um, this week's comes from... Um, where's his name here? I've lost it. Stuart Morris. He's come up with a conference system for Rugby League. Uh, there's a few holes in it, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I've, 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 already, I've already had a reply to this, actually, from someone else with their own suggestions. So, um, so Stuart's idea is 32 franchise teams that are split into four pools of eight. Each team would play everyone in their conference, home and away. And then, after that, the top teams go, I think the top two in each pool or something go into another conference in a champions pool and it's all very complicated but I can sort of see where he's getting to. My only concern was... It was the first league I think. The first league, yeah. I mean I don't know where Whitley Bay Barbarians have come from. <laughs> I don't know where they've come from because all the other teams are established. So in the Eastern Conference he's gone Hull, Hull, KR, York, Newcastle, Doncaster, Sheffield, Edinburgh and Whitley Bay. I don't know why Whitley Bay are in there. Is he from Whitley Bay? Uh, may well be. I don't know how they snuck in, but they are. Is he um, Whitley Bay's a professional team? Maybe he does. Now, right, so that that's all right. Central was Leeds, Bradford, Wakefield, Huddersfield, Cass, Halifax, Cass, Batley and Peston, which is, there's no central about that. That's Yorkshire, that. That's Yorkshire. Let's let's say what it is. West is Saints, Wigan, Salford, Lee, Witness, Warrington, Oldham, Whitehaven. And then the expansion league is Toronto, Toulouse, Catalan, Ottawa, New York, Valencia, Barcelona and London Broncos. That sounds like a, a slightly more extravagant league than the, the Yorkshire league. Well, yeah. well, yeah. I think the issue I... One of the issues I think I said was... Like, I, I mean... I look at it and think, well, Saints, Saints and Wigan aren't really going to sign up to play, with all due respect, with Miss Oldham and Whitehaven, I don't think. And then there's also the concern, well, what happens to the teams that finish bottom of the expansion league? Like, do they go and play, like, Whitehaven or something? There's a, there's a few holes in it, I think, but... Um, it, 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 it sort of stirs up the debate is do we need to be franchised do we need to have franchised clubs if we're having all these overseas teams does it need to be franchised if they're going to be overseas it's a tough one isn't it because I don't, I don't think that franchising system could work in rugby league James because there's, there's not enough money involved because obviously the, the Yorkshire League, there's how many teams were, were uh, full-time in that? Five? Six full six. Well, I mean, th I mean you'd imagine it would change. <coughs> you'd imagine it would change, wouldn't you? But, um, you know, if you went franchise, they'd have to be full-time. And it's like the the first league that you mentioned with Whitley Bear. Uh, <laughs> won. Whitley Bay wouldn't be in it. Let's get that. Let's they get They could be in it. So um, you're already one one team down. <coughs> and one thing that is missing from that list, there's no Welsh teams. There's no Welsh teams. So um, yeah, I think they'd have to go in the West, wouldn't they? You'd imagine. Um, you'd, you'd probably maybe you'd kibosh Oldham. Sorry, Oldham. Was there a Newcastle? Newcastle were in that that first one. You'd maybe you'd maybe kibosh you'd maybe kibosh Oldham out of the West and put. North Wales or West Wales. Or so where do, all, where do all of them go? Well, amateur, I guess. Oh. There's a few clubs that aren't mentioned in here. Swinton aren't in it. Rochdale. All them sort of teams. Back, so um, could, could you have Jewsbury. a Manchester club? Dewsbury. Anyway, let's move on from that. Feverston <laughs> um, are going to play Valencia Hurricanes in a pre-season friendly on January the 11th. I've just got some information sent through on this. It's going to be played at the Levante Stadium, which is called the Estadi, well, the City of Valencia Stadium, yeah. to you and me. It's a football stadium, which is the home ground of Levante football team. It holds 26,000 spectators. It's the 23rd largest stadium in Spain. 
And in 2014, it actually hosted a Spain football match. They beat North Macedonia 5-1. So, we we think that Saints and Salford are going to play there as part of the double header. Um, what do you think about this, Drew? I like the idea of it, James, but... Who's going to be playing for Valencia? Exactly, this is, this is what I mean. I think, it, I think we're... we're, we're... We might be running before we can walk in some respects because we don't we don't even know if they definitely join in League One, do we? Oh, oh, oh I've not heard anything that, about it. That are joining League One. It, well, I, it's, it's, it's sort of come do, a bit. It's do, been a bit left field, hasn't it? It's come do, out of nowhere. Do, well, Valencia want to to be a League One club in the near future, um, but I don't see how playing Featherstone and Abbey Saints and Salford play the pre-season next year I don't know what that does really well I suppose it introduces rugby league doesn't it too but nothing's been confirmed I, like they, they might have these pre-season friendlies and then that it, it gets squashed and they, they don't they just disappear off the face of the earth so I'm just I'm just reading through some notes here the Spanish president um, was pleased because they got more than a thousand attending the match against Ireland which of course received some criticism from Tyron McCarthy, etc. Um, I mean, it is a bit of a weird one. It has come out of nowhere a little bit, but they but they move fairly quickly. Um, it's very cloak and dagger at the moment. Um, playing wise, it says they're in constant conversations with clubs and players regarding their objectives, um, and they are they're playing in the Spanish league in twenty twenty while they await the RFL's decision. Is that what this? That's what they've said. Um, they've been in our, they've been in conversation with the RFL for a while. They've sent their proposal and answered all the questions that are being asked of them. Um, and it would appear that they're waiting for um, the clubs to basically sign it off and agree. It might be a question for Andy Wilson. Maybe after this, I'll send Andy Wilson an email and ask him what's going on with that. Um, there's been no confirmation of the Saint Helens versus Salford game as yet. Um, yeah. Which is obviously well, we'll, quite, we'll, which we'll, is obviously pivotal because I mean you can't have Feverson against Valencia we'll, at twenty six thousand we'll, with all due respect. Will we'll, so Sol, and Saints want to play each other when they play each other on the first game of the season? It's a very fair point. It's a very fair point. Because don't they, don't they play January? No, that means uh, February first. No, February first it'll be. Well, I mean it's still three weeks, isn't it? But will they want to play each other? Will, will they not want? Well, maybe 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 that's part of the issue. Maybe maybe that's what's happened. Maybe. Because you, you'd want Saints to go over as the champions, wouldn't yeah. you? So maybe they're thinking, well, you know, can we persuade someone else? I'm surprised Warrington maybe out. Warrington are obviously known to do the warm weather training and all that, aren't they? Well, we're, we're going to keen to have games on tour, aren't we? Yeah, maybe so yeah, Hull's another one, obviously. They went to Australia. We're going to Warrington game, Fev. I, I suppose... And, uh, but, but saying that, we're going to Warrington's uh, first game oh, of the season as well. No, well, maybe I think you'd have Saints, but maybe would you? Have, you could have. Well, could you do it Saints v Warrington because then you've got the Super League winners and the Challenge Cup winners. Possibly. Yeah. You know, and make it like a Charity Shield type match. Oh, don't don't uh, start. I'm, I'm big on Charity Shield. Shield. I'd get that back, me. I think that'd be a great way to kick off the season. Do you not think? Too many games, James. Well, no. Obviously, if you ditch the loot fixtures. You could have the South uh, Yorkshire Cup taking over the Doncaster Sheffield. <laughs> the South Yorkshire Cup. <laughs> um, let's have a look at the. Oh, I was. What happened to the old, the, the old, the old, the, the old slash New Yorkshire Cup that we're, we're introduced? Well, I'd imagine. Next, well, I'd imagine year. it's not. I'd imagine it's just not being announced yet. No, I don't think it's going ahead this year. Do you not think? No, I don't. I think thought. Not. I thought someone had, had mentioned it. Um, well, Brad, 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 Brad right, didn't like playing seven games before. Oh, well, sod Bradford. Um, let's have a look <laughs> at this. Um, let me have a look at this Spain team, Spain national team. Um, we know Maxime Garcia, who we mentioned before, who's playing in France. He, he played for the Spain national team, didn't he? Um, who else do we know? Antonio Puerta rings a bell. Who does he play for? Roman Palais played for Hunslet for a little while, didn't he, last year? Um, also played for Toulouse. Yeah, they've not really got anyone there that I recognise, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, we haven't got a clue who's going to be playing for them. Feniston... <laughs> Feverston presumably think it's going to be worthwhile. Um, the players will probably enjoy their jolly up. Um, there is, you can go on the Valencia Hurricanes website actually and book a trip. Um, where is it on here? 
if you go on the Valencia Hurricanes website and click on the Friendly versus Featherston um, news article, there is a link to book some sort of package, um, which includes return flights from the UK to Alicante, transfers to and from Benidorm, um, stay in a three-star hotel with breakfast, and a ticket to the match. You'll also receive a, a Valencia 2020 shirt and a share in the club. So, so you could, you, you could, James, put in your Twitter bio, share shareholder yeah. of the Valencia Hurricanes. Um, you can also buy a share uh, and, a, and a shirt on the Valencia website. They're selling them for... You can get a shirt and a... I might get one of these, to be fair. A shirt and a share for €50. Euros. Um, show well, a bit of solidarity. It can't be a big, a big share, can it? Well, no, I mean, shares, shares are worthless anyway, aren't they? I mean, oh, yeah. what's the point in having a share in a rugby league club you don't make any money? Um, so, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. I, I don't, that looks quite smart, though, that shirt, does, doesn't it? It looks nice. See that. It's but very, very Boca Juniors-esque. Is that what you're going with? But it's more orange than yellow. Well, it, very, it's very if you've not seen it, it's basically style. blue with an orange bar. There's a few li little orange stripes underneath. Um, but it, it's all right, isn't it? Um, right, let's look at then to, to this weekend. Um, Great Britain, Papua New Guinea. What's going to happen, Drew? I think the Lions will win. Uh, if that's what you're asking, I think the Lions will defeat the Cummels. 7.30am on, um, on Saturday this one. It would be a complete embarrassment if they lost and they came, they came home with, um, with with four losses out of four. Uh, um, but then again, with all due respect to Papua New Guinea, can you really take anything away from the game if, if you win? Have Papua New Guinea named a squad? Yeah, they have. It's on Love Rumble League. BBC aren't running it, I'm not see. David Mead returns from injury for Papua New Guinea. No, we'll get it up now, hang on. Bear with me. Wayne Bennett, actually, there's an interesting piece on the, on the BBC, actually, where when Wayne Bennett says he's not interested in criticism of his tenure. Um, if criticism helped me, then I'd read it, he says. But it doesn't. I haven't read a thing and I'm not interested. We've had three world-class teams in the national field and what's the biggest losing margin? Eight or ten points? Well, he's not doing himself any favours, The is thing he? is, though, with England breathed to victory last year against the Kiwis mm. in the Autumn Test Series and they've found it much more difficult this year. I think Michael McGu Maguire should get some credit because he's done an incredible job with the New Zealand national side. He's put the culture and the identity back into the Kiwis. Uh, but as they've t taken a step forwards, we've also taken a step backwards as well. And, and uh, yeah. I think the Kiwis have overtaken us. I've got the teams then. So Papua New Guinea have got Johnston, Gebby, Mead, Olam and Mean. Star growth and Mean, who of course plays in Championship or did last season. Lay Butt and uh, Watson Boas, who signed Doncaster recently. Wellington Albert leads front rower. Um, Puari is another one of the barrel, barrel, barrel lads. Yeah. Page, who doesn't sound Papua New Guinean, I think he's the white bloke. Luke Page. Yeah. Put Russell and Martin here back row, Reese Martin, of course, from Leeds. And then on the bench, you've got I Pape. I Pap. I Pape. I Pape. Gary Lowe, we won't talk any more about him. Stanton Albert, and then Meninga, who I presume is some sort of relation to Mal Meninga. Is he? No. No? No. I don't think he's. <laughs> I don't think he's anyway. And I think you've just made up these last three names on the reserves Talita, Mackie, and Wappy. You've got as the same, <laughs> that's a good um, that's great, a good round to be fair. Like, great Britain, even real <laughs> Great Britain's team is Lomax, McGilvray, Hughes, Connor, Austin, Hastings. Oh, I've missed Widdop. Widdop, Hastings, Hill, Hodgson, Tom Burgess, Bateman, Whitehead, Graham. Same team as last week. Yeah. Jones, Thompson, Clark, and Wormsley on the bench, and the reserves are Philbin, Williams, Truman, and Hardacre. Which means I don't know what who's left out of that coup. Hanley, well, and and, uh, and Ryan Hall or Gildar. What are they yeah. doing? Are they just twiddling their thumbs and lads or what? Well, I don't you, understand why you need Gildar four. You got to Ryan Hall got all. You've got a twenty-four man squad, <laughs> and you name twenty-one of them, and that just means two players are just sat picking the nose somewhere. Ridiculous. 
<laughs> right, this takes place at the Oil Search National Football Stadium in Port Moresby on Saturday, 7.30am. It's live on BBC. I probably wouldn't bother getting up for it. Maybe put it on the card and watch it a bit later on. If any of the other, if the if the previous few weeks are anything to James go on. Enthusiastic as ever. Right, listen, right, I mean, it, it's not been great, has it? What time's a women's game on? Is it Five a double edit? Yeah, it is. Right, so that makes more sense. Um, so, we, England women uh, and uh, is that the England eight? men basically are taking on Papua New Guinea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the, repeat, the full repeat of Papua New Guinea versus Great Britain is on at 11.30 a.m. on the BBC Red Button. And then highlights are on f at 4.30 on BBC Two and also at 8 o'clock on the Red Button. Even though um, they're showing England women, there's no mention of it on the uh, BBC website, which doesn't surprise me as such. And nor is the women's game in the fixture list on the BBC website either. And um, it's been shown by the BBC. What? And it's been shown by the BBC. Yeah, so uh, I was watching Match of the Day 2 actually on Sunday night and they mentioned that Barbarians against Fiji Rugby Union is live on BBC this week, but there was no mention of uh, Great Britain against Papua New Guinea. And to which someone said, oh, well, maybe it's not popular enough. And I was like, well, if it wasn't popular enough, why show it? You can't tell me that more people are interested in Barbarians against Fiji. <laughs> or, you know, it, anyway. Is it, is, do you reckon there's some sort of agenda against Rugby League in this um, I think agenda's a bit more. I think I think the issue is I think rugby league people think rugby league's a lot more is a lot bigger than it actually is. I think outside of our little rugby league ball, I think no one really knows. Well, we've league. just we've just mentioned it then, haven't we? That Barbarians and Fiji were mentioned on the beat. Yeah, but I think well, yeah, no, I I do think I think it's and... very easy. I, I th there obviously is some sort of issue somewhere, but I don't. I think the issue is rugby union is far bigger than rugby league. Yeah. Like, you know, you look at Barbarians and Fiji, it'll be at Twickenham, I think it's at Twickenham, it'll be probably 70,000 crowd. You look at that Great Britain match against New Zealand last week, it was, it was, it looked embarrassing, in my opinion. You know, you, you're, you're trying to sell, you're trying to sell Great Britain, New Zealand as the pinnacle of rugby league, you know, international rugby league, the pinnacle of the game, and it's just being played in front of empty stands. You know, so why, why should the BBC or, or other people take rugby league seriously when it can't even draw the crowds to what's supposedly the pinnacle of the game. The thing is that the, the issue that New Zealand face at the minute is they're, they're not the most popular national side in New Zealand either because well, Tonga, no, Tonga are the most popular side, national team uh, in New Zealand in, t in rugby league terms. Um, so that's the issue the Kiwis face. Um, but we need, we need to... Um, Welcome Tonga's rise as much as we possibly can, uh, yeah, because it's, it's not it's not just great on the field. I mean, in the stands it's brilliant. Yeah, like, but I mean, I think I think but, but regardless of Tonga and whoever else, we all moan about rugby league not getting coverage. But then when the when the games are played out in front of empty seats, you know, you ask why. I've just had something come through on the PA wire. Wayne Bennett has defended his selection policy on the Lions tour. Um, he says the best players here are, the, are in the English competition. Lachlan Coote is Scottish and Joe Philbin has played for Ireland and there's a couple of others who were due to come but got injured and couldn't. We picked what we thought was the best team. No one looked at their nationalities. Obviously it's predominantly English but that's the way it's been for a long time. He says about Ash Hanley, I wanted to bring him to Papua New Guinea for some culture and experience. The reality is we lost a number of players with injuries. Um. If we had more injuries, we could include Hanley. We didn't. We're happy with what we've got, and we'll go with that. Is what he says. Um, they've met. They visited um, the squad. Uh, members of the squad visited um, Tatana Island to pay tribute to Katawatio, who played for Canberra with Blake Austin, Josh Hodgson, and Elliot Whitehead, and was due to sign up with Witness um, ahead of twenty eighteen until his sudden death after a, a training run, wasn't it? I think. Yeah, I think. Um, was it was it Kanye Yeah. Um, yeah they they met the entire village and they visited his grave along with being taken to Otio's mother's house which was built after he passed away um yeah the uh the, some nice words there actually they left the lion's shirt in tribute to him but yeah right go on before uh, we all get some comments say, on it. I, i've got one more question for us how do we grow the game in wales scotland and ireland do we Say franchise playing out of these places and putting money into grassroots, etc. 
uh, gets them a pass I mean, straight into Super League or get a 15% uh, extra salary cap increase to uh, encourage someone to invest in these kind of places. So you, you, you're probably looking at Dublin. The problem, you've got, the problem you've got, though, is regardless of what location you put it in, you need someone to put the money in. No, no, no one at the RFL or whatever put a dot in Toronto. Someone wanted to run a team in Toronto and put a load of money in. Until someone comes along and says, I want a team in Glasgow and is prepared to put the money in to, to fund it, it's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. And no, nothing that the RFL or the International Rugby League can do is really going to is going to correct that situation, in my opinion. Um, you know, Scotland and Wales... Uh, Rugby League's built on money men at the moment. Isn't it? It's, it's always going to be. It's uh, because it's, otherwise, well, it, the only I mean, reason it's um, the re let, let's 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 be realistic. The reason rugby league exists is because of the the M sixty two corridor, and that is the only place really where it would ever be sustainable to a level without because all the best players are concentrated there. The best players come from this tiny part of England, obviously you know discounting Australia in this argument, which means that if you were to set up a Glasgow team or an Ireland team. You're gonna have to tra you're gonna have to parachute in at least twenty players, mm. and pay for them to live and relocate. How many how many players do you think would relocate to Glasgow, like Super League players? I don't think many would, unless they were being offered a fortune. It's different with Toronto, isn't it? Because there's a bit of glamour going there. But unless you're gonna get paid a wedge more, and ultimately that all comes back down to the money men thing, where you're gonna need someone who's got bottomless pockets to go. You know, like a coup cash. Kukash would be yeah. great. If Kukash went and set up a team somewhere, you know, like Glasgow or Dublin and could just pump his money in, you know, but then the problem is with that is then it might die after five years. You know, you've still I, I, got, I go and play for Dublin. You've still got that issue with Toronto. You know, Toronto great at the moment, but but if David Argar gets fed up in five years, it's just going to disappear. Could they not turn the Glasgow team uh, into basically what the Scotland national side is now? Well, I mean, obviously they've got interest in... And build on that. So you could make a couple well, They of... did that in cricket, didn't they? So, like, in cricket they had Ireland and Scotland, I think, played in the uh, the county championship in their, like, one-day competition. Um, so they were playing against, like, Lancashire and Yorkshire and all that. And obviously that helped develop those nations to the point where they obviously play more international games now and obviously international cricket has improved. Um, so you could make that argument, but it only works if you've got a base of Scottish players, and there's just not a base of Scottish players, let's be honest. The majority of the Scotland team is English lads or Australian lads who've got a bit of Scottish heritage, who are already playing, you know, in, in, in the league, wherever else. You'd like to think that someone could put a, a team in League One with Scottish players and make a go of it, but you've got to ask, well, why has that not happened? You know, why hasn't that happened? Why isn't, you know, Scotland reached the quarterfinals of the 2013 World Cup. Perfect legacy after that would have been to have a Scottish mm. team in, in League One, but it, it's never, it doesn't feel like it's ever even been close to happening. Mm. It seems more close with Dublin, doesn't it, than what it does with Scotland? Well, I mean, I mean, I mean even then, I mean... I go, I go anyone, play for Dublin, I'll, I'll, I'll put him out. Has anyone, has anyone really, has there been that much noise about it? Really? I mean, like I say, it's easy to be critical, and I, you know, I am critical sometimes of, you know, the overseas team, you know, like Valencia and... But, but ultimately, if someone in Valencia wants to put money in and, and someone decides it's going to be a viable option, then they're going to do it. The problem why it's not worked in Scotland is because no one's come along in Scotland with a load of money um, to put a team in. So Louis says, I fear for rugby league outside of England, uh, withdrawing all the development office, etc. is killing the game. We do need more development well, officers, I mean, but I mean, well, we do need development officers. You know, that, that's part of the thing. It's like, we talk about expansion quite a lot, but... but People are turning away from the game in where it's the strongest, and I'm not just talking players, fans, you know, fans to, space levels. The whole thing is, you, you, rugby league can only be as strong as where it is the strongest. And I think the thing is at the moment is, the heartlands are getting weaker and weaker, and it's like, well, without that, what have we got? And I'm not saying that's not re I'm not saying that's a reason to not support expansion because it's not. But what I'm saying is, you're almost like I, I make the I make the. Um, the thing that I've said before, it's almost like building an extension to your house while your house is on fire. You know what I mean? It's like, you need to like make sure your house is pretty solid before you're building an extension on it. And that's my attitude towards it. <laughs> Thanks as always for watching um, the Rugby League Lunch Hour. We're here every Thursday, 12 till 1. Um, we're sponsored by Betford and Heaven and Health. Please do check both of them out. 
Um, we're off to France tomorrow, so we might do some lives over the weekend from overseas just to show you the rain in France, you know, a bit different to the rain in England. Um, and we'll, we'll have some feedback and coverage. Do you have that smell? <laughs> What, what all are you these? Oh, from the rain. When you go abroad, and you all the rain yeah. yeah. I don't know, but obviously it'll be interesting because we're going to see 10 teams this weekend that we've never seen before. Um, we're going to see some players. We're going to unearth some gems, I reckon. I think next week we're going to have six players that <laughs> teams should. Six players from the French Elite team that should be signed by championship clubs, I think. That's what we're going to go for. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.